Hello, everyone, and welcome to Canadians with Disabilities and Their Allies. My name is Brent Frayne. I'm the host. And today I have Honourable Sheila Malcolmson, the NDP MLA for Nanaimo, joining me. Hello, Sheila. Welcome to my show. I'm really glad to be with you. And I understand that I'm the first Minister of Social Development and Poverty Reduction to be on your show. So I'm the first. Actual, actual, I love actually, it. Yeah, the sitting minister, the, the first sitting, sitting, the first, first sitting, sitting minister. minister. Uh, we've had Shane on. What, has it been three or four times now? Shane uh, Simpson. Three or four times we've had. Three or Shane. four times, yeah, and he's been he's been great. But yeah, uh, you're but you're the you're the first sitting minister. This right. is wonderful. He yeah, did it in retirement, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the things I I wanted to ask just selfishly is uh, is Malcolmson a Scottish name? I was I was curious. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we've been in Canada a long time, but it's from the Orkney Islands, so it's a little bit Scottish and a little bit Norwegian. Oh, okay, he's wow. like given by some for Norwegian princess in a marriage arrangement or something like that. So I yeah, was, I was curious because uh, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm Scottish as well, so I was kind of curious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I I have a little bit of Scottish in my background too, a little bit of Scottish, and it's mm. um yeah, it comes way back. You know, they passed on generations to gener generations, and yeah, it's kind of neat. It's uh, um, mm. Sonia's uh, um, uh, Norwegian too. She's got a Norwegian name. Right on. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. So so what are we going to talk about, Brent? Yeah. So yeah, so today, um, Sheila, I'd like to talk about um the the new increase of uh, one hundred twenty five dollars to the uh, shelter portion that was historically, uh, you know, frozen for, you know, a long time, um, since 2007. Uh, and that's great. Like I'm, I applaud the government for increasing that, um, to $500, uh, maximum, uh, for pre PWD who are able to have that maximum, uh, 125. Unfortunately, like not everybody was able to have that $125. Uh, if your rent was exceeding that 375 threshold, then you would get that full 125, which, People in market housing, obviously, the rents are a lot more than that. Um, you have to use your support portion to basically pay for the top up to your rent. So that, you know, so I was able to get that 125, which is grateful. I'm very, very grateful to uh, to the ministry for that. Um, however, you can't find housing for uh, for five hundred dollars. Um, so I, I had a, um, an idea that I'd love to pass it on. Um, now, there's I wrote down all my little notes here. So. Um, right now, they got the SAFERS program for uh, the, the shelter aid for elderly uh, renters under the uh, BC uh, housing umbrella. Um, the rental assistance program is called RAP. Um, so they, they basically will get 30% of their income, which is rent geared to income. Uh, now, my suggestion would be to help the renters within the market housing uh, for PWD, BC PWD, would be to have that extended over with a brand new program, kind of like SAFERS or RAP, but under that uh, BC housing umbrella so that they can still stay within their housing that they love to live in. If maybe they love the house that they live in, they could still stay there, but eliminate the shelter portion altogether and, um, and then just make a new program so that the uh, recipients can now, they can live with anywhere in BC and they can still have their rent gear to income uh, and I think it would be fabulous because they can put that money back into the community that they live in and they're not paying all that high market rent and the landlords are still going to get their money into the, the day. I, I spoke with my, my landlord and she thought that was a, a brilliant idea, Brent, uh, you know, cause at the end of the day, we're still going to get our income for your rent, but you're not as a recipient wouldn't be paying um, out of your pocket. It would be subsidized with the, with the government as a top up with that. And I said, okay. And so, yeah, that would be my one suggestion um, because, yeah, they, I mean, there's so many people that are uh, just struggling uh, trying to pay that market rent and the prices, as we know, they keep going up. Uh, as soon as somebody leaves their unit, uh, the rent goes up. Uh, and yeah. some of the landlords are just bragging about that, which is disgusting, right? Uh, I think it's wrong that they shouldn't be bragging. I mean, I mean. Because, uh, uh, and we've talked about this before, Brent, too. I mean, now that the, um, the rates are uh it's fifteen fifteen uh fifteen hundred and fifteen dollars uh for a single person right that's that's the that's the rates now and so now that the rents or the shelter portion is is fixed at 
$500, it basically is 30% of the full check. So in that way, it's geared to like the 30%, which is good. That's mm-hmm. good that the, the, that the shelter is geared to here's 30% of your full check is, is shelter. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, uh, the majority of, of people that on PWD are trying to find housing uh, at market value. <laughs> and there's no market value rents at fi- at, that are targeted at $500, right? Yeah. So, so on the one hand, you can say, that's great that you've got the $500 that's 30% of the full check or the full income, which is great. Mm-hmm. But there, there are no market value rents available at five hundred dollars. <laughs> well, well, that, let, let me say two things. Um, mm-hmm. So one is hundred percent. It's the cost of housing is is the hardest thing. And even though we have built like tens of thousands of new affordable units and more on the way, population growth global inflation it is like it is hitting people hard everybody hard and the mm-hmm. most vulnerable people get hit the hardest so you are you totally hit the nail on the head even though we keep increasing rates like this is the fourth time that we've increased social assistance rates since we formed government in 2017 but we know that people are still really feeling under so much pressure so there's more for us to do for sure um so I would say like about your idea, Brent, Yeah, I love how you think outside the box. And it's a really interesting question. It's one of those things that would take a cross government conversation. Like I yeah. get to control social assistance rates. So that's how we were able to get the shelter rate increased for the first time in like since 2007, I think like a really yeah. long time. Um, so You know, if we were to look at SAFER or some of those other programs, that just means a broader conversation with the housing minister and others. So what we're doing right now for the first time since 2002 is totally overhauling our income assistance legislation. Like that was, you know, who was in government in 2000. Uh So it was a different ideology, totally different time. And so we've been, um, that is happening. We got tons of input and I'm really hoping that if people are really calling for it and if I can, you know, make, we could, we can make space in the legislative agenda, then we'll be bringing in new legislation. I really hope this spring and it'll get at some of those fundamental changes. Like so far we've just been working within an old structure and just adding more money to it, but this is time for systems change. And so if you haven't already sent that idea into my office for our legislative overhaul, please just write us a couple paragraphs and get it in because we'd really like to consider new ways of, of doing yeah. work. Um, it, this is our, this is our time and time for us to kind of break out of a quite an old mold and, um, and bring in some of the progressive things we've been hearing, especially like s- almost 80% of the people that have put um, their input into our poverty re- reduction strategy consultation and our legislative overhaul they're all people who say we have lived experience of being in poverty. And so we're really getting good, um, credible content and, um, and we're really determined to act on it. So thank you for the good idea. Yeah. And, and thank um, you on that, uh, for answering that for me, Sheila. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, the, a lot of the, uh, the terminology uh, within the legislation uh, in the ministry, yeah, it's, it's archaic uh, as we know, um, you know, especially like one of the, one of the feedbacks I get a lot and I see it on Twitter sphere or, or we want to call it X now or whatever. I my, my logo just changed this morning. It's now X instead no, of a, no longer the bird. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and, and I get these feedbacks and I, you know, and I'm, you know, anyone listening to the podcast later on, like, uh, I know I just want to, you know, quickly say, like, I'm not able to answer all the questions to the minister today. Um, I is basically just doing an overview, but one of the ones that Sheila that really stood out a lot on the declaration form of people who have to declare income each month was, is there any outstanding warrants for your arrest? I mean, that was one of the big ones that stands out a lot and, uh, and about marriage equality too. And that'd be something that Neil is going to talk to you about also, but yeah, definitely a warrants for your arrest. I mean, they'll say, well, I'm PWD. I mean, why, why are they asking yeah. these questions? Because, yeah. because uh, one thing I, I really want to give you kudos again, uh, Sheila, is that, uh, I know it takes a lot of courage, uh, the, uh, fa- the fact that you're a sitting minister, to come mm. on the show and take 
some slings and arrows. I mean, that, that yeah. takes, a, that, that takes a lot of courage to, to do so. Right. And, um, you let, you have let Brent know that you're watching our mm-hmm. show. And I know that, uh, you know, Brent and I always tease that wouldn't it be great to have a million followers. Right. Um, yeah. but, but more than that, more than that, it's the who the, that it's the who that's uh, listing. Right. And so as long as we're getting, uh, you know, uh, the VIPs and the MLAs and the MPs that are watching that to me is the most important thing. Mm. And, and I just wanted to let you know, with regard to stigma, like I remember, I think it was about three months ago when you stood up in the legislature and you were talking about the stigma of the drug supply, which, which is a really important thing, you know, of course. Um, But I just wanted to expand that and say that the stigma of, PWD social assist- assistance is a is a huge thing too. There's lots of stigma associated with with the way that the PWD social assistance system is currently set up. And one of those things, as Brent alluded to, is like, when's the last time you were in jail? <laughs> you know, and and can you please empty your pockets of of all your change and things like mm-hmm. that? I mean, yeah. you know, that's pretty. You know. <laughs> it's it's not respectful you know to to have that type of question and saying you know can you please empty your pockets and and things like that you know it, it you know that kind of stuff has to change right yeah yeah you know i'm hearing this a lot um i heard it before i was minister and so now i'm in a position you know that we're able to make some of those changes and yeah. you know, both in the poverty reduction strategy and also this legislative overhaul you know, we're getting really good ideas. Some of the things I know, Nick Simons, my friend and predecessor, he yeah. wanted to change the legislation got in the way. And so that's is where we're getting at the root of uh, it. And uh, so, so, you know, sometimes um, what seems like, let's just do this overnight, you know, there's surely we can do this. It's, you know, we're new Democrats, right? If we could have changed some of these systems already, we would have, you know, with just the stroke of a pen. And so now it's taking us getting into the legislature, overhauling the legislation that was written at another time. And, um, and you know, both the spousal support um, rule, we've been hearing about this for a long time. This is our opportunity to change that. And I know this is really a concern to the premier as well. Um, mm. And I know Nick uh, Simons really worked hard on that. Um, having to sign that you're not a criminal, you know, it's like, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, so it's yeah. on our list for sure. Hey, but can I take, can I ask a question of you guys? Yeah, this is back sure. to the housing question. I was touring, this actually happened twice, that I've been in a new BC housing building that has mm-hmm. got some units that are built for people with physical disabilities. Mm-hmm. Totally like wheelchair perfect, low counters and everything and then the building manager says actually these the reason i'm able to show you this room is that it's empty we're having a hard time finding people we're required to build a certain number of these types of really beautiful units view of the ocean like they're so great they're super low rent but they say they can't find the people to live in them and so i wanted to reality check this with you guys that doesn't Um, make sense to me i know Yeah. Now yeah. they are again like built for someone that is in a mobility device. And right. they say, you know what? If there's somebody that is really, really, really short, then we can rent this unit to them as well because the low counters make sense to them. But otherwise, we have a hard time finding tenants. Have you ever heard about this problem? And do you have any advice for me on that? I haven't heard that I, at all. I, yeah. I have I haven't heard anything about that. I do know that I there is heard. a um I know that there's uh, a Twitter and a handle name out there. Um uh, her name is Witchcraft, and uh, she's reached out to the premier, um, our, our premier, and um, you know she's homeless right now, and I know she needs accessible housing for, for like two months, right? All the way from it's been, been two months, December. yeah, and yeah. So I think I know she needs, um, which, but she just has, a, I think, a service dog also, and she uh, um, needs for accessibility wise. So maybe that'll be something that that she could uh, utilize. Um, I mean, ideally, I love short countertops because I'm not tall. <laughs> so, but for me, I mean, I'm not in like a scooter like Neo, Neo or, or many others. Um, but for me, accessibility wise, that, that would be ideal. Uh, and I can reach things easier. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, you can sure. come back. You can come back to the uh, 
Van Vancouver or Langley. <laughs> Um, that, that, but that would be one thing, uh, uh, Minister, that um, I think it would be very uh, helpful for so many that are needing that kind of housing, uh, if it's readily available. Um, I'd like to see more of that type of housing getting built because that way um, people can actually utilize uh, the more the, the low income housing. I had a, I had a friend uh, who, who lives in North Van and as you were uh, saying, uh, these are like five star. It's five star accommodation in these in these uh, you know new builds. Uh, they they devote like one floor uh, to accessible um, you know low income low income individuals, but it's 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 five star living for everybody else, right? So they just have like. What is it? Ten percent of 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 the building has to be for mm. PWD low low income, but yep. but I like I toured her suite and it's it's like everything is like to the nines, right? And so it's it's amazing that there are those subsidized suites available. <laughs> um, yeah. It's just a shame yeah. that there's not more of them, or that, like you said, we can't have some sort of safers thing that we can make it fair that people that are paying market can get, you know, so, kind of similar value for, for the dollar, you know, mm -hmm. that they'll have to pay. We're, hey, build, folks. You know, we're, we're building as quick as we can. And, you know, certainly COVID and all the global supply chain interruptions have been a challenge um, so far as being able to go as fast as we wanted. And when we started in a hole, I was told the previous government canceled all the affordable housing projects that were on the books when they took government in twenty. In, in 2001 and so you know we didn't do that when we came in you know we carried on all their stuff and and have added so much more but um you know we've also had a quarter million new people come to bc in just the last yeah. two months alone and so it is really you know it's a it's an act of faith you know to be able to see yeah. that we've opened up a lot of new places um, but also that the need is still um, intensely strong. And so we're building more, but you know, like I, you know, like you said, Neil, the places that I've been able to tour, you can't tell which units are subsidized, mm -hmm. which ones are not. And so that is part of that stigma piece too, you know, is, and yeah. people will make neighbors and have friends who maybe are business owners and might be able to help them through their relationship. Oh, you know, why don't you come and work for me? You know, all those things about us not wanting to, to silo people or separate people that um, have faced barriers in the past, you know, to, we want them to be connected with community and be able to have that full, you know, full ability to engage in life and not to be able to tell, you know, who's in the, who's in the subsidized place and, and who isn't, but we yeah. definitely, as we're building up all these places, we definitely want to get the best ideas about making sure that they actually fit people's needs. And so, and so the feedback is really is really good. Um, I am being called to another meeting, but yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed talking with you guys and keep the good ideas coming. And I look forward to our next conversation. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you I guys invited to, me on the show. Yeah, I, I look forward to having you uh, back on again very soon, Sheila. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll kind of continue where we where we left off on this for sure. Um, so yeah, I want to thank you so much uh, and uh, everyone. Um, I had uh, Sheila, Honorable Sheila Malcolmson from the BC Poverty Reduction uh, joining me. Uh, Sheila is uh, the MLA for Nanaimo, British Columbia. Um, Sheila, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. I look forward Thanks. to having you on soon. Thanks very much. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks to you both. Bye, guys. Thank you. Okay. For thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Sheila. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in.